my contribution uh, possibly will uh, fly a bit lower and but trying to answer or address a more practical uh, uh, issue that is connected with artificial intelligence um, and how artificial intelligence can be used also for digital resources. Uh, my work is on digital collections and online collaborative communities using insights from Wikimedia Commons. As an economist, I've been uh, interested uh, for many years in digital resources, how digital resources uh, are used uh, and shared, mainly as informational resources. And the reflection that I'm bringing here is uh, an intellectual journey that I'm doing with other people and other organizations, actually to understand what are, from a governance viewpoint, uh, the best model for making cultural institutions, glam institutions, uh, share their knowledge and their heritage. So the starting point is that digitization, from my perspective, or at least from managerial and economic perspective, has brought, of course, an, a profound change in the enhancement, preservation, and protection of cultural heritage. Uh, maybe I'm wrong, but uh, the articles, scientific articles that were addressing uh, how digital transformation was affecting society. The first one came actually from libraries, from memory institutions. But much of the digital transition discourse uh, has often focused on the opportunities and challenges that GLAM institutions face, especially from the managerial and uh, economic literature. I'm talking on this. In humanities, possibly there was already some other focus. But in economic and managerial and organizational literature, most of the studies were interested in understanding how uh, the digital transformation was impacting these organizations, which were the opportunities, but most of the time with the focus on the institutions. And relatively less attention was on grassroots and collaborative initiatives in contributing to this process. So the point that we are addressing today are what I'm trying to address is a reflection on what are the features and role of what we can call digital heritage community initiatives in knowledge dissemination and production of uh, heritage. Secondly, what happens when digital collections are openly shared with online collaborative communities? And uh, what GLAM institutions can learn from the access and reuse of their digital collections? And we will, to answer these questions, we basically use as an illustrative case uh, Wikimedia Commons uh, uh, that has been already um, cited uh, some of the experiences in Wikimedia projects. So let's start very briefly from uh, the first point, collaborative digital heritage communities, what they are. Uh, this is a very, I mean, loose concept because uh, the, the notion of community is uh, also very questioned. And uh, many people in the, I mean, in, in the museum sector, we talk a lot about audience engagement, engagement of the publics, and how it is difficult to transform this type of engagement into a real community. And, uh, and that's true. I mean, online interactions between museums and uh, individuals or audiences uh, may not classify these forms of dialogue as building up a community. This is something that is uh, very important. But uh, to, to, uh, to address and to highlight, but at least from the, uh, from the literature, from the research that I have studied these, uh, um, these dynamics, we can say that the notion that internet has enabled the, the uh, blossoming of uh, online collaborative community is something quite established, at least from 2005, 2006. Uh, we can remember, just to give you an idea, uh, Yokai Bankler, one, uh, one uh, legal scholar from uh, the Berkman Center of Internet and Society that uh, developed this uh, uh, reflection on commons-based peer production or the open source movement are all, were all examples at the, that time of uh, type of decentralized collaborative communities that were producing knowledge and disseminating and exchanging informational resources. But in the heritage sector, these uh, 
the definition of uh, online collaborative digital heritage communities uh, was already there, but basically came out from the convergence of needs and attitudes by glam institutions, heritage professionals, and individuals sharing interest and passion for heritage in general. We know, and possibly you know better than me, the participatory turn in glam institutions that uh, uh, was very fundamental in, uh, in uh, basically uh, endorsing the adoption of digital technologies for uh, enhancing these uh, participatory mechanism uh, for the interaction between uh, museum and uh, audiences. And digital technologies from an economic viewpoint have reduced the, these barriers and enhanced the opportunities for engagement with audience and bring in the wisdom of, crow, of crowd or what Pierluigi Sac was saying before, participating to the conversation. And finally, another quite important that sometimes in Italy is not very well understood, but it's a triggering factor that many glam institutions, galleries, libraries, um, and museums, archives and museums uh, often preserve public domain documentation. And uh, it seems quite uh, well, straightforward that uh, they can uh, share and or their mission is to share these uh, uh, resources these, uh, when digitized uh, to the people or making them openly accessible. So all these factors are basically the, the ingredients or the enabling factors that today are uh, bring us to talk to digital heritage communities. But of course, it's quite difficult to understand um, what is a, a digital heritage community. In this slide, I'm just uh, giving you a brief overview that uh, actually is coming from uh, an interesting publication from the Open Culture Working Group, Digital Community Heritage. It's a Creative Commons working group uh, uh, that uh, has tried to map many different initiatives. And uh, on the left-hand uh, uh, side of the slide, uh, you can see a first type of classification where the, the classification is based on whether the initiative was initiated and led or by citizens and volunteers on one hand, or by the GLAM institution in itself. And from that point, uh, you can have uh, what they call community-driven initiatives, community fuel initiatives, or community-oriented initiatives. Of course, the degree of control of uh, uh, the knowledge of the information of the discourse on, on heritage uh, deeply changed depending on whether uh, the community initiative started from uh, citizens on volunteers uh, or started uh, mm, by the glam institutions on the on the right hand side of the of the slide instead you see some key dimensions according to which uh, a digital heritage community initiative can be classified or are for example the first dimension which type of content creation and curation is allowed uh, between the members of these uh, communities what are the rules for participatory process uh, so if there the communities close knitted, uh, it's open, and so on, which is the degree of knowledge of openness, not only for the participation of the members, but how the knowledge is shared. And this third, uh, this third dimension uh, has uh, mm, a lot to do with uh, the use of licenses, basically in uh, exchanging the knowledge like Creative Commons licenses and which type of restrictions are, uh, are defined. Finally, go Mm, moreover, governance rules, also if there are some uh, curator activity or who is in charge of uh, correcting maybe errors or trying to, uh, trying to lead the, the process of uh, creation of knowledge. And finally, also different digital heritage communities may be classified according also to the technological infrastructure they use. Different, for example, uh, uh, software, different platform uh, may be used and uh, 
from a technical viewpoint, they enable or restrict some specific uses. So I'm not, not entering into a classification or discussing them because the, let's say, the heterogeneity of uh, typologies is quite wide. In that publication, uh, you can find uh, some interesting uh, way to, to, to uh, identify different uh, communities that go from uh, uh, also uh, heritage, uh, but uh, um, citizen science production and the folksonomy and many other uh, typology of communities. What instead uh, I want to bring here uh, that I think it's more interesting uh, for our discussion are what we did, what we did uh, in trying to understand what the community that is the one uh, uh, emerging from Wikimedia Commons, from Wikimedia projects, uh, as done uh, with the reuse uh, of images. And this work um, is actually uh, what I'm bringing here. It started as a master thesis from Alicia Fontana that then turned out into a publication co-authored by me and Enrico Ferraris, uh, where basically uh, we try to explore uh, very humbly, let's say, uh, something that also in um, with a methodology that was already there because uh, some other scholars uh, uh, have used the images um, available in Wikimedia Commons to understand patterns of knowledge production and sharing. But what we did was try to apply them on images of archaeological items or antiquities items. Why? one can choose or why Wikimedia, the Wikimedia ecosystem is particularly useful to uh, talk and analyze uh, community, digital heritage community initiatives. Well, first of all, because Wikimedia projects, uh, and for Wikimedia projects, I mean uh, Wikimedia as an encyclopedia, but also OpenStreetMap, uh, uh, and uh, Wikimedia Commons as a, an archive of digital resources, multimedia resources can be considered a Wikimedia projects, are all examples of of what I was telling you, this definition of commons-based peer production, where knowledge uh, is considered as a shared resource. Uh, all the content is basically is a shared resource because it's uh, openly accessible using uh, uh, full open access uh, licenses. And users in a decentralized way actively participate in the creation, sharing, and classification of content. The notion of community in this case from a, an, as an online collaborative community is quite loose. Uh, I'm not entering into the uh, a discussion on how it is the community of Wikipedia, but just to give you the idea, uh, whoever can create a, a user uh, account uh, and uh, can be free to interact and there are there are a lot of studies that have already analyzed the interaction and how this community is evolved on many different themes but the second point that is quite relevant is the global reach i mean we know that wikimedia projects uh, are very uh, well is knowledge uh, and is knowledge that is produced uh, or published in many different languages so it is also interesting because in this way we can address how knowledge is disseminated through different uh, uh, cultural domain or language or um, geographical domain. And since uh, the um, openness of the project, uh, we have a lot of open data tools that are useful, and this is the key point why we adopted this, to track digital resources utilization. This is something that, for example, already other museums uh, uh, that, uh, have, uh, um, that have uh, started collaboration or use simply Wikimedia projects uh, as a repository or uh, as an opportunity are using. Indeed, uh, the, the third point is that nowadays there are well-established Wikimedia Glam cooperation, uh, like Wikimedia in Residence and the uh, Ditatons, and uh, I mean the, the the picture that I I showed before uh, here already showed an experience that the Museo Egizio did, uh, and uh, also I think the Wikimedia in Residence is currently a project that uh, the Museo Egizio has to bring its open access collection uh, into 
Wikimedia Commons. And Wikimedia Commons is indeed one of the most extensive ar archives of freely usable multimedia resources on the web. So all these basically are uh, very enabling conditions to study how images, when they are, uh, or digital resources, digital collections, where they, when they are openly accessible and put on the infosphere, how they are uh, reused by people or that we can call somehow communities. What we did, well, we, uh, this project was done around in 2021 uh, and uh, at the moment the uh, Museo Egizio collection was already in open access uh, through CC BY 2.0 license, but was not already ported into Wikimedia Commons. So the very simple experiment that we conducted was to search on Wikimedia Commons all the images of items that were connected to the collection of the Museo Egizio. And we found uh, 592 images, of course, not uploaded by the institution itself, but by other users, okay? Anybody could it. Uh, and we found these 592 images within uh, the labeling uh, collections of the Museo Egizio of Turin. We used some tools that were already been developed by the Wikimedia community that are Glamorous and Baglama uh, 2, which are tools uh, to analyze metrics, basically, on uh, reuse of the images, on the views, and so on. And uh, we collected, of course, other information from the Wikimedia Commons page uh, about the content of, well, the content of the file, its uh, uh, source, uh, the author of the, or the uploader, and so on. And finally, we also tracked, we will see how, the history of the Wikimedia pages on which the images were used. So, a first evidence that we collected, and this is something that, uh, okay, it's, uh, it's something that uh, uh, in other digital realm is quite evident, uh, that there is a grid polarization, uh, what it's called, well, the superstar effect uh, and the long tail effect. Uh, it's a quite well-known phenomenon, but we documented this also in the reuse of uh, images uh, in uh, of the reuse of images, meaning that, uh, for example, of these uh, images, we discovered that only 24% uh, were used in at least one Wikimedia article, uh, and the 76% not yet used. And uh, you see from, uh, well, we plotted also what we call the Gini curve that is used to, 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 uh, to uh, visualize the inequality in utilizations, for example. And uh, it is very steep because actually it is true that only 24% were used in at least one uh, Wikipedia article. But if you see on the right hand of the slide, we had some superstars images, some superstar items, which were the Turin statue of Seti II and the Turin papyrus. Uh, that were used in 83 Wikipedia articles. So these were actually the most used images. Another interesting evidence that we um, tried to track was the dissemination through Wikimedia projects. This was actually an interesting and uh, also inspiring evidence because uh, uh, the idea was, well, when the images is left in Wikimedia Commons and start navigating the Wikimedia projects, in which language is used, in which uh, uh, other domains it goes, and uh, how many views these images. And on the right, on the left hand side of the of the um, of the slide here, you see the number of Wikimedia pages uh, using images of the Museo Egizio per language. You see, for example, that of course the, the majority, the 12% is uh, uh, English Wikipedia, followed by 8% of French Wikipedia, 7% of Spanish Wikipedia, but we have also a 56%, that is quite high, uh, amount of uh, many other languages uh, that have somehow some images of, uh, from the collection of the Museo Egizio. What is more interesting, in my opinion, is uh, the number of views 
at July 2021 and from July 2021 to December 2021 obtained from that images, where you see that uh, basically the coverage, the interest in views um, that comes basically from uh, seeing or a Wikipedia page that include that image. So we don't know whether there was a, an exact interest on that image in itself, but we see that the largest coverage is from uh, uh, English Wikipedia, that if we consider 42% divided by 12% is a ratio more or less of three by one of views against, uh, against uh, uh, the uses in the pages. What is interesting, for example, is uh, the Arabic, the Arabic uh, domain, meaning that in only 4% pages of the Wikipedia uh, in Arabic, uh, we had uh, images from uh, uh, collections of the Museo Egizio, but the views were 11%. So, uh, considering the commitment of uh, the organization of the institution to uh, also open to the people that uh, speak Arabic from Arabic culture, I think this was an interesting, uh, an interesting evidence that we were seeing as a channel also to uh, disseminate the uh, knowledge of the heritage stewarded by the Museo Egizio to other culture or to other language domain. Final evidence, and this I think the, it's the, the one that mm, was the most entertaining for us, uh, uh, how images are reused. And uh, again, here we not invented nothing. We applied a methodology that was already done for the Met using uh, uh, paintings at the Met. Uh, but for archaeological, well, for archaeological uh, uh, collections was quite interesting to understand where the in, these images were used uh, in terms of knowledge productions. And you see here uh, the most used categories of Wikipedia articles. In this case, we restricted because it was quite difficult to track all the reuses. We re, uh, track the reuses only on three Wikipedia and see on three Wikipedia versions, the English, the Italian, and the Spanish one that we have seen that were the main uses. And you see that, well, images were mainly used in the category for history, 38 for arts and cultural heritage. But the more we go down, we see that we have other reuses that uh, uh, where the community is basically reinterpreting or using in a quite different way uh, the images of uh, uh, the collections. Just to give you an idea, uh, I, we selected four images, and uh, here we, we display the journey of the images into different knowledge domain. At the beginning, for example, the Turin statue of Seti II, uh, uh, using 83 uh, projects, uh, it was uploaded in 2005, okay, uh, by by a user and uh, was almost uh, and was already the first interesting thing is that was uploaded by a user in order to be included in an article directly in the same day so there was a direct intention to upload this image for creation of an article or for the enrichment of an article and then this uh, this uh, this story of uh, uh, the statue of set of the images of the statue of set second basically show how this type of images is used mainly for uh, for historic character and facts to document historic character and facts and was used as soon as was uploaded and you can see that it started from the english wikipedia version but then moved in the italian one then was uh, uh, reused uh, somewhere in the list of pharaohs in uh, in the english version and so on another example instead is the journey of the turin papyrus in this case uh, it started again in uh, the upload in 2005, but uh, uh, was not, well, the first use was not by the same uploader, was by somebody else uh, one year after. So already this gives some idea of uh, uh, the heterogeneous path of uh, knowledge reuse, and actually was used in this article about Wadi Hammamat. Uh, in the Spanish version, and then followed in the 
web page of the Museo Egizio in Turin, but from the Spanish version. And then this image moved to another knowledge domain that was the one more related to technology, that uh, uh, because it talked about mines and mining activity, till, uh, for example, the uh, well, we're basically on technology. So here we have a movement from location, for knowledge about the location site to technology adoption. Another one in this case is uh, the uh, the code the Turin, where the application is more related to uh, to measure unit of measure and the economy. And the interesting thing here is again that it's Utilization started with unit of measure and for many years it was not utilized. And finally, another interesting one that maybe can challenge some curatorial vision or the authoritative control of uh, museums uh, on their images, the Turin erotic papyrus scene uh, actually is being used to document the history of erotism in Wikimedia Commons. So just to conclude, uh, uh, I think that these uh, Evidence uh, is uh, creating some uh, uh, food for thoughts. Uh, to go back to the first question or one of the questions that uh, we had, how and uh, what can GLAM institution learn from when they open uh, their digital collections uh, to communities and how these type of communities that are still very loose to and should be studied more uh, interact with the content. Uh, so this is the evidence, I think, that because the time is running, I would leave more for the question. Thank you very much.